morning, everybody, and welcome to the Manny Diaz Show. Joe Zagacki, Don Bailey Jr., University of Miami head coach Manny Diaz. This week, the Hurricanes at home for their final home game of the year against Virginia Tech at 7.30 at Hard Rock Stadium. Miami coming off, well, another dramatic game inside the ACC, another dramatic game for the year, and another wild Miami-Florida State game. Unfortunately, Coach came up on the short end of this one, this time against Florida State, a, uh, a wild finish and a tough one. Yeah, we didn't finish. I mean, that's a key. I mean, it was it had every makings of a classic Miami Florida State game that we've seen throughout the years. Um, and it came down to a play that they made, you know, and that's that's those are the plays that we take a lot of pride in going our way, not just this football team, but at University of Miami when you play Florida State. And uh, you got to give them credit uh, for the way they battled back, but got to give our guys credit too. I thought I thought the way our guys fought um, through the course of that game to, to take control was 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 gave you a lot to be proud about. Like I said, just the lack of finishes is what cost us. You know, Manny, I'm going to go the philosophical side here for a minute. That game is undescribable to a first-timer. I imagine coaching in it and also playing in it. And it took this football team a little bit to absorb what they were into. At least that was my perspective. Do you agree with that? Well, we told them. We, we, we did a little history lesson on the game uh, during the course of the week. And... We told them, I said, if you've been, if you've only played in last year's Miami Florida State game or even two years ago when we went up to Tallahassee last time, you probably really haven't been in a proper Miami FSU game. And that atmosphere, you, you got to give their fan base credit. They brought it, you know, and uh, for a team that hadn't had a lot of success, the place was packed. It was jumping. It was loud. And we had a lot of young guys that looked like some young guys in the first half, we, and especially in the first quarter. We, obviously, we were jittery on defense, um, and, it, and we were turning the ball over on offense. Um, as you mentioned, though, to our guys' credit, kind of once we got our sea legs, um, we established a foundation in the game, made a big play to Will Mallory. Um, and from that point on, you know, I thought we really started to exert ourselves on, in the contest. The, uh, the first quarter penalties had to be extremely frustrating to you, right? Because, I mean, as the defensive coordinator, you're, you are, you're paralyzed. Wait, you, you, everything's taken away from you. They end up dictating policy because, because the ball is being marched down the field without any resistance because of penalties. Yeah, five penalties on the first drive. And, yeah. and I mean, you could see the over, you know, the, the jitteriness. I mean, you, you three guys jump off sides because they're just so anxious and eager. And you, you just, you lose, you know, you lose all sort of, lose your training is really what happens. And uh, um, those are preventable, you know, preventable penalties. And so we have to own that as coaches, you know, to make sure that we train our guys better for the, the stressful environment, what they're gonna be in. Um, but you know, for, from 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 that standpoint, the guys did get better with that as the, as the game went on. Also, the giveaways. You had three giveaways: uh, two interceptions and a fumble. And fortunately, Nesta was able to to get uh, a fumble recover himself, so it was it was three to one. But that's almost an unsurmountable amount of giveaways to overcome. Yeah, it's hard to win when you're down minus two in turnovers. Now, I will say one thing that the defense did a nice job of after the first drive is they they made two sudden change that's stops, right. which were really big to keep us in the game. You know, then eventually we had the one at the 12 yard line that may or may not have been a forward pass and, and they scored there. And from that point, they kind of had some momentum and we needed a momentum play to get us back in. That's where I thought, you know, Rhett did a phenomenal job on the trick plot pass. And when I mentioned a moment ago to Mallory and that kind of got our guys going and got our guys back in the game. Keyshawn Smith, you know, three straight games now, the touchdown pass. And, and then from that point on, now we were in the ball game. It, it was a 28 to three run. I think uh, it kind of gets lost in the shuffle. It was a 28 to three run after being down by 17 against Florida State in that environment. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we were exerting control on the game. Now, obviously, because we were down in such a hole, we, you know, we were only up one score, but, um, but we had taken control. I mean, I mean, there's no doubt about that. And that's why I keep harking that word, finish, finish, finish. I mean, you've got to finish everything you do. Um, and ultimately they finished and we didn't. You look at Jalen Knighton, 162 yards last week, not many yards on the ground this week, but showed his completeness as a player, came up with a huge catch that resulted in points. Yeah, phenomenal play. I mean, you know, could have been one of those Miami Florida State plays you watched for a long time. Deserves to be. Um, and run game is frustrating. I mean, so many runs where Jalen looked like he was going to spit out of there and just kind of got sideswiped you know, in the legs and, and tripped up for a gain of three where we really felt like we could have made some more headway. And they make it hard because you know, they're going to play with a light box you know, where they, they've got less people in there and you can get them all blocked. And their D-line would do a good job. We knew they were active and they would do a good job of shedding a block at the last minute and, and sort of being able to play a gap and a half. And, and that was the difference in the run game. 
Uh, maybe this will be the last time you have to relive this this week, but you had the two plays in the fourth quarter, the last drive. Uh, Douglas down the sidelines, Ken Kitchens was within an eyelash, I think I'm making a play there. And then the fourth down play, maybe take us through that. Yeah, we had been, look, they, they were really struggling going into the game and they've been struggling during the game with man coverage. Um, the, the drive before we had, we had um, you know, they, they kicked the field goal that drive, the drive before that they had, had a three and out versus man coverage. They were starting to get into pick routes and mesh routes. Um, and so most people in a two minute drive, the most important first down is normally the first first down because once the offense gets going, now they have a chance to establish tempo and get down the field. You know, so you're, you're gonna play man coverage. You know, we've got a deep post safety. Cam's out to the Cam's in great shape. He's in phenomenal shape. He's the best cover safety we have. He does, he does a great job on the play. When the ball is in the air, he looks over the wrong shoulder. That's all it was. It's a, it's a technique thing, and the ball was fantastically thrown. Maybe the best deep ball we've seen Jordan Travis throw all year. You have to give them credit for that. That's yeah. execution. They made a play. Um, but to that point, we got him on the ground. You know, and we still, then we stopped him on the next play, which is a huge, after a big momentum play like that, to get a big stop on a run. Stopped him on second down, stopped him on third down, and had a fourth and 14. Everything says you should stop fourth and 14. That was ultimately the play that decided the game, and, uh, and they were able to execute that better than we were. We should mention that 50%, going into the game, 50% of their passes were behind the line of scrimmage, right? Right. So this is not, this is not a team that a, was a vertical team. And you got them where you right. want them, but drop back. And, and when they, they had tried to ball, throw the ball vertically against us a couple times during the game, and they were, they were struggling to put it close. I mean, I mean, like I said, that was a big-time throw. He made two big-time throws. you got to tip your hat off to him. Um, we could have done some things technique-wise better um, you know, on the, on the deep ball. And then obviously on the fourth and 14, just from a situational awareness standpoint, where we've got to help our players out to let them know they got to get 14 yards to get a, to get a first down. I understand where you're aligning yourself up. And, um, but like I said, but to his point, to his credit, he, he made two uh, you know, big-time game-winning type throws. James Williams banged up a little bit, took himself out, I believe, right before half. That put a lot of pressure on Avante, who hadn't had a whole lot of practice time or playing time this season, but he stepped up, made some tackles, and uh, he certainly is a physical football player, especially that hit that he had at the goal line to keep it out from a score. Yeah, he loves, he loves the physical part of the game, loves to run and tackle. Uh, but yeah, you're right. I mean, he's, Avante's been drinking through a fire hose, and it's not just in our base defense. I mean, what's, you know, James' loss was big because James is a really uh, versatile guy for us, can play dime in our third down package. You got to remember now, our third down package had three true freshmen on it. Mm -hmm. And then when James comes out, you know, Tyreek Stevenson moves into dime, but that takes you away from corner. I mean, there's a lot of moving parts, and that, you know, that affected us and having some uh, issues getting lined up in the second half. I mean, it was, you know, we're, we're obviously thin in the secondary, you know, putting it mildly. And, and, uh, and so you're trying to move the parts around to make sure that you can get everything solved and lined up to at the end. Uh, some would say for a player like Tyler Van Dyke, who's had uh, early success, not this big sample size, uh, the test is what happens when things go bad. And things did go bad for him in the first quarter. And then he threw four touchdown passes. That was pretty impressive. Yeah, I, I think you could see it. I mean, I, look, you got to give that environment its respect. I mean, that was – that's a hard place for a rookie quarterback to go into. That's not, you know, it was a good crowd at Pitt. It's, it's not Pitt, you know. I mean, that's it's a good crowd at Carolina. It's not Carolina. I mean, that's, you know, that's Doe Campbell State. You can think about the Miami Florida State games through the years. And there's been a lot of Miami teams that have gone up to Doak and started slowly, you know, in those type of environments. I and mean, I think back to the classic, the 91 game, you know, where again, Florida State hopped out to lead. And it was that, it was that dreaded 13-point lead where it's just, you know, you, you, easy to come back. And that's exactly where we were. And to Tyler's credit, once he got going, I think, I, I, I know the third time I mentioned that, Mallory, but he made a great throw to Mallory on that trick. It wasn't just a trick. It was open, but, it, yeah, it was close. And he had to put it on there, and, and Tyler did. And I thought from that point on, he played with a lot of confidence. You know, many uh, description for me of the physicality of that football game, some people can tell at the line of scrimmage, but you really could tell at the wideout position, like the hits that Harley was taking, the hits that Miami was delivering. On the outside with the skill players, it was intense there, is as intense there as it was on the line of scrimmage. Oh yeah, I mean that's it, it was it was a real live contest in there, and uh, and like I said, I mean you, you have to give both teams credit, both both players credit. I mean everybody was competing at a very very high level. Uh, probably should wrap this segment up with this. Now uh, you have to you have to move forward. Virginia Tech is coming up next. Uh, how do you during the course of the week get your team to away from Florida State? and to come out energized for Virginia Tech? Well, there's two things that you're going to remember in your last year in college. You're going to remember your Miami Florida State game, and you're going to remember your last home game, right? So our guys who, that was their last chance at Florida State, a lot of those guys had never lost to Florida State. So 
stinks for them to, to lose a game in that fashion, okay? How do we make it up to them? We make it up to them by sending out a hard rock winners. And, and when I say we, that's everyone in our organization, everyone in the locker room, staff, everybody. Those guys owe it um, to, be, to, to walk off that field Saturday night winners against a really good Virginia Tech football team. It's not going to be easy. Um, but I think instantly when we had our meeting Sunday night after the game, it, 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 it immediately set us a focus, gave us a mission going forward. Um, the seniors have been through a lot here. You know what I mean? Those guys have, some of those guys came back for an extra year. They've had great careers. And, um, and, and our guys want to play for them, you know, to see them out as winners. Okay, it is Virginia Tech on Saturday. Miami and the Hokies at Hard Rock Stadium. We will continue with Hurricanes head coach Manny Diaz right after this. Hey, it's the Good Greek Spiro, and we all know that the most important part of winning a championship is getting there. And when the Miami Hurricanes need to get their equipment to each game, they call Good Greek Moving and Storage. The Miami Hurricanes trust the Good Greek, and so should you. So move like a champ and go to goodgreek.com. Good Greek Moving and Storage, the official movers of the Miami Hurricanes. Good Greek Moving and Storage, your superhero movers. If you train like a pro, then you should be treated like a pro. Much like the human body, our team of sports medicine experts moves as one to achieve a singular goal. Recover your game. Happy to welcome you back to the Manny Diaz Show. Joe Zagacki and Don Bailey Jr., Miami and Virginia Tech on Saturday at 7.30 at Hard Rock Stadium. Hokies rolling here. Now, they've been up and down all year, but they've won two of their last three. So you get a team that's feeling pretty good about themselves. Yeah, they've played really well against Duke this past weekend. They, they um, not dissimilar to us, um, in my mind, are a team that's better than their record. You know, they had a heartbreaker in the last minute to Notre Dame. Uh, they had a real heartbreaker in the last minute to Syracuse, you know, games that they were right in and, or either had won. Um, and, but we both come in three and three in the ACC, you know, so it's a, it's a big contest for us, big game for our guys. I suspect it will be for them as well. We, we, we anticipate them to come in and, and uh, compete at a very high level. Coach, they've got a quarterback in Brumeister who has a good arm, does everything he, he can in the passing game, but also he offers a little bit of a threat as a runner as well. He can fly. He can fly. I'm going to tell you now, we've played mobile quarterbacks this year. He may be straight line speed, the fastest of anybody we've okay. played this year. He can roll, and, uh, and you see it when he takes off as a, either as a scrambler or on some design quarterback runs. I mean, he just he gobbles up yardage. You can tell he's got a, a sprinting background. He, he, he can, he's, he's a stress on the defense. Uh, they've always been known for their, you know, their identity, their lunch pail and hard nose and, and all that stuff. So how important is it, I guess, uh, do they still, still show those features? One, how important is it to match their physicality and energy? Oh, it's, it's, it's step number one. Yes, they do. I mean, they, they, they're very physical on defense, play very hard. Um, and offensively, they want to run the football, you know. Uh, got a big offensive line. They want, they want to, you know, grind it behind. And, um, look, you know, dynamic, a couple dynamic wideouts, you know what I mean, that, that allow them to make some plays down the field. But uh, you, you, step one of, of, of playing Virginia Tech is you got to match that physicality if not exceed it. Coach, going to the Duke game, they rushed for almost 300 yards and threw for about 276. So they're seeking balance while trying to be explosive. That's right. And some of those numbers come from explosive plays, you know. Because um, what happens is you get so, you get so, you know, jarred up in, in stopping the run that you know now they've got some great play action passes. They've always been a very creative offense, Coach Fuente and his staff, and run guys out of the backfield on wheels, and you know, just you, you lose track of a of a tight end or something like that. And um, so they, they've they, they've got some really good screens. They they present a lot of uh, problems for defense. And they've always had great defensive backs too, and uh, Waller right there with the, yeah. with the other guys four interceptions this season. Yeah, four and, and one for a touchdown. So um, very multiple in the back end. They play a lot of different coverages, try to disguise well, you know, mix up their pressures. So uh, it'll be a big test for Tyler. It's, a, it's another big test for Tyler. He has had one every week. And big picture-wise, they're sitting at five and five. Miami's five and five. This is for a bowl game. I mean, yeah. the winner here is qualified to go to a bowl. Yeah, that's exactly right. And uh, our players know what that means. Um, I, I, like I said, I expect this game to be competed at a very, very high level. So we look at the, uh, the season inside the ACC. We were talking with Coach Justice, and uh, the numbers are something like, okay, you're three and three. The, the amount of points, the difference between points for Miami, points for the opponent, I think is 
the line. same. Yeah. And the difference between yards and the opponent's like 30. <laughs> so it's been a slim margin all year. Yeah, it's going to be tight. I mean, I keep saying that, you know, the NFL and college ball are starting to look more and more the same. You know, mm -hmm. we're seeing close, close games and evenly matched contests. And, you know, in our league where, you know, if there's a lot of high-level quarterback play, I mean, that's, just, that's what you're going to see. So uh, I would expect the same thing on Saturday, a very tight 60-minute game. And let's go back to the quarterback position for a moment. Their guy is, does an excellent job running the football. Tyler has shown that he is a capable runner and actually knows when to do it at the exact right time. The question is this, as a defensive guy, how has this, this quarterback position evolved? Because it went from the option and then it went to the drop back and nobody touches our quarterback and you never leave the pocket, to now it seems like it's a split between the two. Yeah, it's... Look, if you're a statue, you have to be so elite mm. in your ability to throw the ball, be accurate, and make all the throws. You know, I mean, you know, I, I think I think offenses have evolved, and, and, and we're able to probably a lot of great athletes that played quarterback um, back in the day that would have would have been just game changers. Now, you know, what I mean, had they played, you talk about playing Virginia Tech this week, mm -hmm. and Michael Vick had been right. in this era, what that guy could have done in, in, in modern spread offenses. Um, but I also think that what you're seeing is, is more of a, of a trend that even if you're not the, that true dual threat guy, uh, to be able to have legs, and you, you mentioned Tyler as an example, I mean, because Tyler can run. Can. And, you know, his ability to, you know, convert a third down when, when it's nothing's there and that type of stuff, that, why, that's so frustrating for a defense. And, right. and there's a feel for that too, right? right? I mean, you see, you go back to Tyler, Joe, you see that it, it opens up. It's not a prescribed call. I mean, no. that's just a lot of his feel. Well, it's time clock. I mean, one, every quarterback should have an internal clock that's kicking, you know, ticking in terms of how, you know, what am I, when is the time to go? You know what I mean? Am I going through my reads? Because you don't want him to say, okay, one read and then run. Going through my reads is a time. Here I go. You know, what coverage is it in? Are they in zone where they got a guy for me? Oh, they're all matched up in man. Maybe that's why no one's open. And that's why we always say, if they're covering everybody, they're normally not covering the quarterback. You know, I don't know if people know all of Tyler's background. He was a baseball player, yeah. right? Uh, a golfer, loves golf. I guess when you took him, when you guys went in uh, the summer, the top golf, he drilled it pretty yeah. good, right? So those, when you play other sports, like baseball, it helps you with your throwing, golf, your concentration. I think he might have even started in high school as a tight end. Is that right, perhaps? I don't know about the tight end part. I, I know he played basketball, but he, Tyler's, yeah. Tyler's a... He's, he's a one of those all varsity guys. You know, yeah. I mean, he, 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 but that all has to help that position, right? Of course it does. Yeah. Of course it does. But the biggest thing it helps is that he's a great competitor, and I think that's what we see. You know, what I mean, and that's why when you don't have a great first quarter at FSU, you can bounce back because you got that competitive spirit in you. And Manny, when you let's just stick with him for a moment. When you when you look at him, the leadership isn't really about what happens on the field. It's how he earned the respect of this football team to be named captain again. It's the weight room, the film room, the classroom, and everything in between, the locker room as well. Because getting that honor, especially at that age, I don't know really, if we go back in time, I don't know that there's ever been a captain that's been a freshman at the University of Miami or a redshirt freshman. Yeah. I, I, that he may be the first one. That's, it's rare probably anywhere. and. Um... You know, and, and I always want to give credit to Derek King, you know, because he had a chance to come in last year and learn from Derek on how you do things and, and what a college quarterback should be and how a college quarterback, it's not just what you do on the field or even on game day, it's, it's what you do in the weight room that matters. So, uh, you know, Tyler's been, you know, Derek set the tone and Tyler and Jake, we can't forget about Jake, Tyler and Jake are, are, are right there in terms of understanding, hey, listen, this is how you lead a big time program like Miami. What do you think this season has done for Rambo? I know what he's done for the University of Miami, but it's had to help him as well. He's going to have, there's a possibility, he's going to have more catches in one year at Miami than he had in his years at Oklahoma. What has this done for Rambo? I'd have to imagine it's a great commercial for his prospects at the next level. I mean, he's come in, he's learned a new scheme, like what you'll do similar when you go to the NFL. Mm -hmm. He's shown a great variety in what he's done. You know, deep balls on the outside, blowing posts through people, RPO game short screens and being able to bomb yardage, you know, that type of thing. So to me, he's a, he's a complete wide receiver. Um, and I think the best part about Rambo is he's been at his best when his best is required. You know, I've got some plays to show later. I mean, I mean, when it's, when it's crunch, crunch time, obviously the big fourth down at Florida State, I mean, just making big, big time plays. And, uh, you know, to me, he'd be a value to any organization going forward. You know, it also shows what kind of young man he is that he can come in and fit right yep. away. I mean, that's not, 
that's not an easy task. I guess people are going to get used to it more and more now with the portal, but to come in into an established program and, and be made a part of the family immediately. Yeah, I, 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 and, and that's where you have to earn your way in the weight room, you know, and, and it took him a minute to, to acclimate to how we do things down there with, with Coach Feely, but, um, you know, once you got the speed, it's been good ever since. Uh, it was pretty clear the other day. He flashed a little bit, but uh, when he was in there, uh, he made his presence known. That was uh, Willie Smith's son, Chase. Uh, yeah. he, he, he came up with a couple of nice plays for you. Do you see him uh, factoring in here in the final couple of yeah, games? Yeah, Chase's role is only going to grow more and more. <laughs> it it would have grown more. He, he, you know, we had a lot of guys that missed time for in the freshman class for flu symptoms kind of during the bye week, you know, midway through the season. But he's got a great future here at Miami. He's going to really help us um, at linebacker. Coach, is, go back to the, the ball game coming up on Saturday. It's senior day, and I mean, that's, that's a pretty special deal. I don't think you know, anybody ever forgets that, their last ball game. And, and how did you talk to your team about the importance of winning this game for the seniors? I mean, not that you need to have something to play for uh, as, as dramatic as that, but there's a lot of guys that have invested a lot here. It'll be their final run through. Yeah, what you do is you actually, I, I don't tell them, I have the seniors tell them. Mm. Um, and every day we're having a couple of the guys talk to the team and not, you know, nothing overboard, but just, you know, what, what they've learned here, what the experience of Miami's been like, you know, what it's going to mean to, you know, pull into Hard Rock Stadium, go through Cane Walk for the last time. Um, it happens fast. <laughs> it goes by really, really fast. And, um, and it's important that the young guys recognize that, you know, it's going to be them soon, sooner than they think. And, and, and you don't want to waste a day because of that, because, you know, they're, I would say, the college football athlete, you know, in the, in the grand scheme of their life, it's it's not a long time they get to play college football, and you want to cherish and appreciate every day. And I think the seniors, knowing it's your last time, you, you have no choice but to cherish your last time in Hard Rock Stadium. We'll wrap this segment up with this. Uh, coming to the end of the line for home games, you never know how a season's going to go. I can't think of a better way than to walk out of that place on Saturday night than with a win over Virginia Tech. That's the whole key. That's 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 the mission for this week. That's all we're focused on. Um, and I, and I, I know the way that this team has stayed together all year and the way this team has fought, and they're up for the challenge. Okay, we will continue on the show right after this. Sure are a lot of different drivers out there, and AutoNation is here for every one of them. The 10 and 2ers, the big fellas, nothing but the besters, even rock stars. But we do way more than sell new and pre-owned vehicles. We believe in something bigger, too. For every vehicle we sell or service, we donate to Drive Out Cancer. Over $28 million so far. What drives you, drives us. Auto Nation. With you Health Virtual Clinics, you can see our experts in every specialty, wherever you are. University of Miami health system providers are available here for all your health care needs. All you need is a phone or tablet to schedule a virtual visit with us. See a health provider virtually today or at a time that's convenient for you. Visit umiamihealth.org slash virtual clinics or call 305-243-4000. University of Miami Sports Medicine Institute. Experts treat athletes of all levels, elite pros, active adults, and youth athletes. Recover your game. Visit uhealthsportsmedicine.com. It's now time for the breakdown segment with our head coach, Manny Diaz. Coach, what do you got? Senior day, right? And, and, and I could have made a, a tape of so many of the guys that are going to play their last game in Hard Rock. But, I, you know, everybody loves points, right? And, and, and two guys that, that will be out there for the last time. One that's been here for a long time. Mm -hmm. One that's been here for a short amount of time. It's Mike Harley and Charleston Rambo. Two wideouts have an exceptional year. Both have a chance to break records um, in their time at Miami. And, um, and just their development and just what they mean to our football team. So I just want to show, just show some plays over the past month, including this past weekend, of what makes these guys so special. You know, this is Rambo in the Virginia game. You've got a young quarterback like Tyler Van Dyke, and we struggled a year ago to make consistent plays outside the field, right? Mm -hmm. And just, I mean, just a how-to on how to run a fade, great speed release, but he holds the line on the defensive back. And see all this room that Tyler's got a chance to throw the ball in there? And watch how he catches the ball over his outside shoulder, which really makes it hard for the defensive back to get in there. That, that's just, that's master class stuff right there. Big, big time play. And then here it is again, you know, NC State game, first drive, such a humongous play, Tyler under pressure. And you see the same thing. Can, can you leave a guy one-on-one -on, -one on the outside? And people would play us like this a lot in the last few years. And if they'd done that with 11 in the game, 
that's what you're going to get. It's, just, it's, been, it's been fun to see what, how he's changed our offense. Manny, discuss for one moment how route discipline makes it so difficult on coverage. Well, because you, you have to have a guy that, number one, can I, can I beat you with speed? And Rambo mm -hmm. can. But also, do I have enough fundamentals and technique to be able to hold you off and I can catch a back shoulder, I can catch with the top, and I'll show you some of the, the plays on here that just make him a nightmare, a, night, a nightmare to cover. This is a humongous play coming off of our goal line, you know, off the one yard line. And same thing, they've got him matched up man to man, works a quick release. And so right now, this is the whole point. See, he's even with the defensive back, but he's a yard above the numbers. It means he's got 10 yards of grass between him and the sideline, which is just a great spot for Tyler to throw the ball. And watch, see, see how he's holding that line? If he ran wide, if he just ran a sprint wide, the defensive back would run wide with him. There'd be nowhere for the ball to go. So watch, see where the Tyler is able to put the ball? But he's only able to put the ball there because, because we, we say he stays on the paint. See the numbers? Yes. Because he holds his route on the paint and then he can fade away. That's in essence of why you call it a fade route. I mean, that's, that's really, really well done. Ball right over the outside shoulder. Great throw by Tyler, of course. And then once you threaten the fact that you can beat someone deep, these last few plays were Rambo. I mean, this is now this is really elite stuff. Same thing, we are off the one yard line. Crucial, crucial situation, right? So again, works the outside release. Is it the go ball like Florida State? No. Nope. Now he's gonna turn, set it down. The ball is already in the air, watch. By the time he sets it down, Tyler's already thrown the ball. The ball's right here, mid flight. So now you gotta be able to adjust to the ball, make the catch, shield the, the, the defender from the ball, secure it in a humongous first down in a game winning situation for us right there. That's elite big time stuff. And then the last one on Charleston, same situation, gives you confidence. Now fourth and six because they don't call the roughing the kicker, they call it running into the kicker on that field goal. So here we go, same situation. He's one on one here on the outside, outside of releases. Oh man, look at the corners. He's in, he's in really, re I mean, that guy is not open. And look at Van Dyke, the ball is already thrown. You know what's about having confidence in a guy that can make plays? Ball is already in the air, sits it down on a dime, bang comes back in front of the defensive back for the ball. Why? Because it's hard for the DB to know whether he's getting back shouldered, whether he's got to defend the, the go ball, comes right, right in front of it and makes a humongous play on fourth down. Man, you got to credit your quarterback and all the receivers because that's, that, that's a lot of extra work that went into making that play happen. about timing on routes. That's, mm -hmm. that's timing. And obviously, they've got, they've got a great thing going together. And then Mike Harley. You know, Mike's, Mike's you, you, know, you get a guy on the outside lanes. Now you got to get a guy in the slot. And sometimes if your outside lanes are really rolling, you know what I mean, which we've, we've had, and there's Rambo. Now look at the, 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 the attention that Rambo, you know, garnishes. Well, guess what? Now Mike on a switch route has got a one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, and Mike's always been able to make fantastic catches. Look at, I mean, look at that great concentration, able to get the toe down. I mean, that's really special stuff. The way he's developed over his career has been phenomenal. Through his career, he has really made a great improvement year in and year out on the sideline. It seems like it just yeah. has a knack for that. I think Rob Likens has done a great job with all of our guys, but I mean, again, just right there, able to get that toe down. I mean, those are just fantastic plays. This is, this is one of the biggest plays of the year. You know, NC State, you know, our, our, our first league win, the first third down and 10 of the game. You know, Tyler, after talking about, you know, what we're going to do against NC State, and this is, we, we talked about this before, he's matched up one-on-one -on, -one on a corner route. He's got to win. Got to win. Bang. And there it is. Another as you mentioned, right? Catch along the sideline, yeah. looks the ball in, secures the catch, big, big time play to get us going. We'd start fast that game and, 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 and you'd be able to get the win. And then, you know, just part of his elite skills too. You know, again, when you got guys on the outside that draw coverage, it's just the RPO game, you know, just sits it down with a hitch. And these are basically running plays on our offense. So now can you turn into a running back? So watch, you know, surrounded by three guys, is it gonna be a short play? Bang, splits. Couple defenders cuts back on another one, and that's an explosive passing play on a ball that you know, you know, was only completed five yards down the field, and that to me is what you want out of a slot receiver. I mean, it's one thing to get respect catching the football or with speed; the other is taking a hit. And Mike Harley has taken a bunch of hits over his yeah. career and held on to the football. His, his toughness is, is is not in question. And then the last two plays in the show is again now you get down to the to the end zone, you know, chance to make big special plays. You're normally going to attract some sort of man coverage and get down there. Sticks the corner out, great throw, and there you are again. Just, wow. just the concentration to see the ball in, to make sure he's got the feet in. That's an NFL catch. You got two feet in, big, big time play. You get great, great confidence that you can do that. I mean, this, this is again, this is to me, you know, the guys that you want to see have a special day Saturday against Virginia Tech. Guys like Michael. I mean, look how fantastic that is. I mean, that's receiver clinic tape. 
And then the last play here, just against Tech, same thing. Same route. You know what I mean? He's going to run a corner route. 13 knows it. Look how 13 goes to undercut it to give it almost nowhere to go. And again, when you have a lead execution at quarterback and wide out, you've got that type of confidence that Tyler does in Mike, in, you know, obviously we see with Keyshawn Smith, in Rambo. But these two guys playing their last game in Hard Rock, it's going to be fun to see these guys put on a show, I think, because we need them to play great. Um, the way and they they've played great for us all year. That does it for the breakdown segment with head coach Manny Diaz. Thank you, coach. Hey, it's the Good Greek Spiro, and we all know that the most important part of winning a championship is getting there. And when the Miami Hurricanes need to get their equipment to each game, they call Good Greek Moving and Storage. The Miami Hurricanes trust the Good Greek, and so should you. So move like a champ and go to GoodGreek.com. Good Greek Moving and Storage, the official movers of the Miami Hurricanes. Good Greek Moving and Storage, your superhero movers. Thanks, Road Warrior. So long, happy little blue car. No matter what you call your car. Goodbye, Speed Demon. Or why you're letting it go. AutoNation will buy it, and you don't have to buy one from us. We're paying top dollar right now. So go to AutoNation.com or come see us for a super easy appraisal. Get paid on the spot, and you can deposit it the same day. Visit any AutoNation store or AutoNation.com. What drives you drives us. The joint chiropractic adjustment of the game. Big play here for the University of Miami. Jalen Knighton coming out of the backfield. A nice angle in, and look at this. He bounces off of Brownlee, pinballs off him. Great block from Romello Brinson, and Jalen Knighton takes it 35 yards into the end zone for a touchdown. What a play by Jalen Knighton. That is our joint chiropractic adjustment of the game. All right, welcome back to the show. Joe Zagacki, Don Bailey Jr., Josh Darrow, our podcaster and sideline reporter on the radio. Hurricanes will play Virginia Tech this weekend, 7.30 kickoff at Hard Rock Stadium. We have uh, talked about Florida State, I think, over and over. And perhaps now the most important part of Florida State is don't lose that game twice, which has happened in the past. It can, Joe, and, and a part of it is the physical side of it. I think that everybody who tuned into that game, us three, of course, being there personally, uh, the closest game that I saw to that physically was the Alabama game. And that game gives you a, a physical hangover, no matter what it is. And then you throw on a close loss, it could make it even worse. It's going to take the leadership for senior day to make sure that Miami gets themselves focused on Virginia Tech. And Virginia Tech, we know again, is a, is a team that's fighting for a lot. They're sitting there fighting for a bowl just like Miami is, Josh. Absolutely. And Coach Diaz alluded to it earlier with you guys. You look at their resume and, and their schedule. It's it's just like this a little bit too, you know. They've got they just, you know, kind of took Duke Duke apart offensively the week before they scored 3 points against against Boston College. So, uh, I, again, and, and being on the sidelines for Florida State, there are many people that were seeking had to seek medical uh, assistance uh it just it's that kind of game it's that physical uh it's that kind of intensity so there, there's a lot to kind of get caught up and reset and reboot for this game both health wise mentally and as don talked about you know you got a group of kids here every year that give their all to this university and they deserve to go out with their best obviously uh sitting here at 500 that's a tough spot to be in late in the season but if you look at miami's offense with van dyke the way he throws the ball around the way Knighton has uh, come up with all-purpose yards, almost uh, 100 yards every game in terms of in terms of all-purpose yards, or more than 100 yards. The way the offense has been run, it's a pretty good selling point for uh, people looking around at the Miami offense, especially with a guy like Van Dyke and Garcia behind him. Two guys have big arms. Yeah, they do, Joe, and they're exciting, and they, and they both of them can run the football. I think that that's what's important to note. And. If their surroundings are what they are, and we're basically, you're only going to lose, you'll lose Harley and you'll lose Rambo. Those are two big names in a lot of production after this uh, senior class leaves offensively. But this offense is designed to put up points. It's done it this year, and it has gotten better with a lot, a lot of youth. A hundred percent. I think once again, I think we got to credit Tyler Van Dyke because we all spoke and discussed what playing Florida State was all about. Just that. Something he, it was his Alabama. That's the way I, it was his Alabama because he didn't. He played a little bit, but it was his. It was his Alabama, and once again, he didn't fold. 
it didn't start the way he wanted. It was probably a little quicker or harder or came at him faster than maybe he you can't really practice for that. And yet there he is leading the team back. They're leading late. He, he, you're on the verge of victory. And I think give the kid credit for standing in once again and, and giving his as good a performance as he could give. The defense was trending in the right direction in terms of playing better as games went on. Sometimes that's the identity that a team ends up with. That's the, where Miami was trending until the last drive against Florida State. But it's important to note there are a whole bunch of young guys on that defense. There are, and I think those young guys on this entire football team felt Florida State. It, it, it's, that, that has an effect on you. And, you know, you may not understand that as a fan, but I would put any former player on both sides of the football on the lie detector test and ask them, if you played in that as a freshman, what did you think? And they, they adapted, and that's going to help Tyler. Let's just stick right there. And also your safeties, right? Avante Williams and James Williams and, and Cam Kitchens, those guys were in there. They're young. You talk about Smith and uh, both of them uh, on the, uh, at the linebacker spot. And they will get – that was a growth spurt. Unfortunately, it came with a loss, but it was definitely going to give them something in the experience category that they'll never forget. And I think they felt it in the locker room afterwards. You know, we're there. Mm -hmm. You watch all the players walking in. You hear it. You sense it. It's extremely vocal and tangible. And, you know, Manny Diaz uh, was on earlier in the week, and he talked about for Cam Kitchens, and we did the game in Penn State back in 98 or 99. It's Mike Rumpf and Ed Reed. As I think Choppy sophomores, Choppy Choppy Fields. as sophomores, Fields. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, those things happen. You know, with them, you remember the end, both at Miami and in the NFL, but there are moments of growth. And for Cam Kitchens, he could not have played that ball any more perfectly for than for like a split second. But you learn from that, you grow from that, and he has given us, those guys have given us as much as they can. And if you look at that group, you have to think to yourself, we've talked about it, imagine when they're juniors. Imagine when they're juniors, or even next year, what that looks like, how they are, how they can play, how much better they will be. We saw Cam Kitchens in the locker room after the game, and he was very emotional right after the game. I would say that that is normal, right, or could be labeled as normal. 30 minutes later, we're still in the locker room, and he's coming out. And that kid's still very, very emotional. And I'm not talking about ranting and raving. I'm talking about upset that what happened to him. And it's unfortunate that it happened, of course. but it's a lesson that he's going to learn and carry with him the rest of his life. But I'll take that. I'll take a guy like Cam Kitchens, who you got beat on that play. It'll never happen again. And you will set an example for, for others because that did happen. Okay, Virginia Tech is the opponent. We'll talk more about the Hokies as we continue on the show right after this. If you train like a pro, then you should be treated like a pro. Much like the human body, our team of sports medicine experts moves as one to achieve a singular goal. Your game. Hey, it's the Good Greek Spiro, and we all know that the most important part of winning a championship is getting there. And when the Miami Hurricanes need to get their equipment to each game, they call Good Greek Moving and Storage. The Miami Hurricanes trust the Good Greek, and so should you. So move like a champ and go to goodgreek.com. Good Greek Moving and Storage, the official movers of the Miami Hurricanes. Good Greek. Superhero movers. Welcome back to the show. Joe Zagacki, Don Bailey Jr., Josh Darrow, Miami, and Virginia Tech at Hard Rock Stadium. Hokies, 5-5, five and five, a little bit like the University of Miami. They won two of their last three. A couple weeks ago, they were dead in the water. Now they won two of three. They're trying to get to a bowl game. They're a tough football team. The Miami-Virginia Tech series has been epic. There's been great wins there, great wins here. We've lost there, they've lost here. Back in the Beamer days, it was special teams, defense, until Michael Vick got there, and enough offense and a running game to beat you. They're still physical. They're still a tough team to beat. They're well coached. They're sitting at the same record. There's a lot to play for. Their seniors are playing Miami last time. Senior day for Miami, but more importantly, it's a bowl game. And to me, you know, 
I still think that's a lot when you're in college football, especially if you're a senior. You got to get that taken care of, and you know you got one more week. Well, we uh, spent a week ago talking about the rivalry with Florida State. And I think for most people, when the schedule comes out, the first game you look towards is Florida State. What's the second one? Virginia Tech. Yeah. Virginia Tech, right? It's, it's the nature of college football. It's the nature of the rivalry, the matchup, the intensity. It's the nature of two you know, storied programs that kind of came up in and, of, in and around the same time uh, with Frank Beamer. And so now the, the, the names and the, the mascots and the, the nicknames, it all means something. And they're also coming... They're coming to your home. They're coming into your backyard, and you know Miami took a took a little bit of a, a punch last week, and now you got you got to punch back, and, and you got a lot to fight for. You get to fight to finish the season, fight to send out your seniors, fight to get to a bowl game, fight to finish on top of 500. You're playing. There's a lot to play for, and you're playing against someone that should bring out the best in you. Burmeister had uh, three touchdown passes last week against Duke. Career high for him. Uh, five plays of 20 yards or more going into the game. I think they only had 19 of those type of plays. But he's fast. He's pretty accurate. He uh, he can be a problem. Now he's banged up, so Miami's going to have to uh, you know chase him around a little bit, and he's going to have to fight through some injuries. I think he's underrated. I think the fact that he runs the football so well, and he's got top end speed. Some guys are right to left or search a, a little quick and take a dive. But I think he's he's got speed. He's got an arm that's big enough uh, to make things difficult on anybody. But their personality to me is still running the football. They've got a big, strong offensive line. They've got a power game that is successful, and that's what they're made out to do. And I think also their head coach is going to have similar, a similar game plan to what maybe we saw at Florida State. Well, you just look at the numbers, you know they want to run the football. Mm -hmm. But they're going to run it close to 40 times a game. Burmeister is going to throw it 25 to 30. His completion percentage is a little down. But when he's on, he's always, look, opening game of the year, they beat North Carolina. You go, maybe this is a different team under Justin, under Justin Puente. But I know whether it's Manny Diaz, the head coach, Manny Diaz, the defense coordinator, has always had a ton of respect for Justin Puente. Really impressed with the tr things he tries to do offensively. A bunch of different looks in the run game. Of course, Burmeister is also an issue, and they've got some guys that can make plays down the field. Defensively, they are 60th in total defense. They're not the same defense as they were scheme-wise under Bud Foster. They have some good players, but I, probably the most common denominator uh, between uh, their defense now and old Virginia Tech is they're still investing in their defensive line. They do. They're powerful, and they're a hard-nosed bunch. They recruit a personality to that side of the football that really hasn't changed. I was a a big Bud Foster fan until <laughs> you played Miami every year, right? I liked his style of defense. He would dare you to throw the football. But more importantly, they pursue the football. They're good tacklers. They're fundamentally sound. And, you know, Josh, you're right. You talked about this as being the second game you look for on the schedule every year. This is a rivalry game. Whether people will claim it nationally or not, it is a rivalry game for Miami and for Virginia Tech. Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, it should, like we said, it should bring out the best in, in both teams defensively. And not quite, well, I mean, Bud Foster was just in your face. We're going to stuff the run, try and make plays down the field. Good luck. And it's, it's, a little, it's changed a little bit, but they've always had good defensive linemen. Some teams have had success running the football against them a little bit this year. Throwing the ball has been a little trickier. And again, for Tyler Van Dyke, it's seeing Virginia Tech, it's seeing a different look, it's marching through the ACC. But I think, like we talked about before, one thing we know about him, whether it starts fast or starts slow, he, he never gives in. And, and I, that's something I think we should all have a, little, a great deal of confidence in. Hurricanes and Hokies, and we'll have the keys to the game when we come back. With U Health Virtual Clinics, you can see our experts in every specialty, wherever you are. University of Miami health system providers are available here for all your health care needs. All you need is a phone or tablet to schedule a virtual visit with us. See a U-Health provider virtually today or at a time that's convenient for you. Visit umiamihealth.org slash virtual clinics or call 305-243-4000. Thanks, Road Warrior. So long, happy little blue car. No matter what you call your car. Goodbye, Speed Demon or why you're letting it go, AutoNation will buy it, and you don't have to buy one from us. We're paying top dollar right now. So go to AutoNation.com or come see us for a super easy appraisal. Get paid on the spot, and you can deposit it the same day. Visit any AutoNation store or AutoNation.com. What drives you drives us. 
The keys to the game are brought to you by AutoNation. No matter how long you've had your car or why you're letting it go, AutoNation will buy it. And you don't have to buy one from us. We'll give you a top dollar offer and check on the spot. You can deposit right away. Appraise your car today at AutoNation.com. Back on the show, Miami and Virginia Tech. All right, fellas, time now for the keys to the game. And for the University of Miami, a couple of important things must happen in order to win number one big plays for touchdowns. We'll get to that in a moment. Protect the football, been a big factor the last two weeks, and contain Braxton Burmeister. Virginia Tech, you get an opportunity for a big play. It's best that you don't leave any more real estate. End up in the end zone for a touchdown. Yeah, big plays have been a big part of this offense. We all love to see it, but you can set those up, and I think that that's what's going to be important uh, for Miami to make sure that they, they work the running game enough, get that circulating again. We went from 162 yards to in the 30s against Florida State, different team, different, <laughs> different deal. Let's get that clear. But I think you got you got to get that play action going and get them feeling that there's a problem uh, stopping the run. You got to stop get Virginia Tech thinking to stop the run. But then you know, bring him in. Yeah. Bring it. Yeah, he's your number one starter, and he likes to push the ball down the field. Tyler Van Dyke and. He's got the arm to do it. He's got the receivers that can run under it. He'll throw guys open, and big plays have been a big part of the offense since Tyler Van Dyke's taken over. Don't get caught is basically the message here. If you catch a long one or, you, or Jalen Knighton breaks one, don't get caught. You don't want to leave them more grass to defend. They're pretty good in terms of recovering after that or with their red zone defense. Okay, how about this one? Protect the football the last two weeks. Miami's turned the ball over six times. You can't. You cannot lose the turnover battle to Virginia Tech. That's always been uh, part of their DNA, is taking the ball away and winning the turnover battle. Well, the thing is now after two games, you're wondering if Miami is getting that reputation, that we can take the football away. You've got to stop that. You're not going to win. We talked about we got lucky with Georgia Tech giving it away three times. I mean, that, that normally doesn't happen. Well. It came back to haunt you against Florida State. You, you, lose, you have three giveaways. You fortunately had one takeaway. You're still a negative two. A negative two in this football game could create the same outcome as it did against Florida State. It's imperative that no matter what, you do not turn the football over. Or if you are turning it over, you better get two more takeaways to go with those giveaways. You know, I, think, what, what, I think you mentioned it earlier, right? In the ACC, it's 200 for, 200 against. So what, what's, the, what's the separating That's point? Right. Yeah. It, it's, you know, either give it up, or get it back, hit in yardage, whichever way you want to talk about it. So imperative to do everything you can to keep the odds in our favor. Uh, Burmeister is a guy that has to be dealt with. We talked about him in the last segment. You got to contain Burmeister. Uh, I think they've got some pretty good weapons, probably not an overwhelming amount of weapons like in the past. But he certainly can make up for that with his arm and his legs. He can. He's, he's a dual threat guy, and that's today's college football. And, you know, as, as much as I like to look at that position and to see a great athlete there, I still know this about that position. Those guys don't like to get hit. They don't. It's just they're usually not hit in practice. They're usually not hit growing up. If he surpasses the line of scrimmage, he's live. Go after it. Make them pay for it. If he's going to run the football, make them pay for it. If you catch him in the pocket, hit him. Eventually, it wears them down, and they'll make a mistake. And unless they're super dynamic, you know, you look at Burmeister, not, no knock, but he's 54 55% completion percentage. We saw it a week ago with Travis, even though he made the plays, credit to him. But guys like that, you want to make them make plays with their arm, right? But it's just not what their, what their strength is or what their comfort zone is. So if you can surround him, corral him, Bring them down, take your shots when you can, mm -hmm. without the flag. Um, you know, put them in the pocket and let's see what you can do. Hurricanes have been down this road before in, with a schedule that has had Miami playing Virginia Tech after Florida State. It's always tough sledding, no matter who they play really after Florida State. But in particular, Virginia Tech, we'll just wrap it up with this quickly. You can, as we said before, can't lose twice to Florida State. Last home game for the University of Miami. They've got to summon up a lot of energy themselves and find a way uh, to motivate themselves and win this game. Well, the motivation has to be your seniors. I mean, that's it, and your own personal pride. 
You've got to, you're, you're playing uh, your last home game this season at Hard Rock. You've got to understand that. You've got to understand the seniors. And you really just have to go at it one series at a time or one play at a time. Don't look at it in its entirety. Go out and win your play and keep moving forward. I agree with Don. It's, I think it's just personal pride, yep. right? It's personal pride. It's you are here. You're on scholarship. You're a D1 player. You represent the U. You're at, you're at the University of Miami. You're, hey, look, you're coming off a loss. So you summon, dig deep, summon something up, and, and play for something as, as meaningful as yourself, your team, your program, whatever it is. If you're going to strap it up, put the helmet on, go out there and play, then make it mean something. Okay, Hurricanes and Virginia Tech. Saturday, 7.30, Hard Rock Stadium for Josh Darrow, Don Bailey Jr. and Manny Diaz. I'm Joe Zagacki. We'll see you next time here on the Manny Diaz Show. <laughs>